Hey there once again, it's me Gia Lasala and welcome back to Pageant Talks and we're now on our season 2 and this time we have a very special guest. She's really growing, you know, in popularity in social media and she's now being tagged as the next Miss Grand International Philippines and we're so excited to meet her and to interview her here at Pageant Talks and let's now welcome Justine Felizarta. Yay! Hey Justine, how are you? Hello. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Gian. You're welcome. I'm so grateful that you're in, in in our show, Pageant Talks. And for everyone's information, Justine Felizarta is a pageant veteran. No, she competed at Binibini Pilipinas 2015, and then she went on to uh, compete at Miss Universe Canada, and yes. then she's now back to get one of the titles for Binibini <laughs> Pilipinas 2020. So mm-hmm. for this interview. Um, we're not going to be too serious. We're just going to chill and get to know the other side of Justine. And if Justine, if you're used to all the pageant questions like, you know, what's your advocacy and why? Here, we're just going to ask you like, you know, some, you know, some familiar questions you've been asked, like maybe when you're not competing. So, okay. So Justine, are you ready? Yes, I am very ready. (laughs) Okay. So here's your first question. So. Who are you and what makes Justine special? Who am I? I feel like you gave me such a good introduction already. (laughs) Well, I am Justine Galiosa Pelizarta. For those who may not know, I am now Binibini14 because we currently changed our number. And I am representing the beautiful province of Padada, Davao del Sur. And I would say that I am the modern Filipina because mm-hmm. I have been blessed to have lived both worlds in yeah. Canada and in the Philippines. So I was born here. Both my parents are Filipino. Mm-hmm. But when I was about six years old, my parents decided that they wanted us to move abroad to Vancouver, Canada for us to study and, of course, have more opportunities there. Okay. So okay. from there, I was able to pursue my career as a licensed medical esthetician, oh, a counseling wow. psychologist. And now in the Philippines, I'm recently a um, director of communications for a company that my friends and I put up called Beyond Testing, which Mm -hmm. is a medical service because my friend's a doctor. So I like to dabble in a lot of um, fields because I'm a go-getter, but I'm also very spontaneous and I love trying out new things. (laughs) Wow, that's a lot, Justine. And then, um, so you you are a medical practitioner uh, if... if, uh if I may say, or if I'm medical asked. esthetician. So medical I esthetician, yeah. on skincare. Oh, wow. Which yes. explains how you look. So maybe <laughs> like, maybe off the record, you can, you know, you can tell me like what I need to do with my face. Yes, so, we can do so. a consultation. Oh my God, this is what I live <laughs> for. Every time someone asks me about skincare, I'm like, okay, how much time do you have? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. like, um, you know, I'm a guy. So, you know, as a man, you know, we don't really like me. I, I don't really care about how I look so more yeah, for yeah. for guys it's more mm-hmm. like how you want your body to be shaped how you want it to be chiseled but skincare no yeah skincare yeah. it catches up to you if you don't take care of your skin eventually you know hormones will change and things will just start happening so yeah. it's better to beat it before it happens <laughs> yeah so I have a lot of questions for you because like I was obese before I was 220 pounds really? yeah and I then I I know and then I can I have lost a lot of weight especially during the mm-hmm. pandemic is like when you stop working out using the machines you're you're gonna lose a lot of your muscle mass so yeah most of my workout is just body workouts I'm, I'm having a lot of like saggy loose skin uh, especially mm-hmm. with my eye bag so i will consult you with that like how to yeah. make it firmer like is there any other way you know that's uh, you're not gonna use a machine for that so of course there's so many ways you can actually do it right but like it depends on how fast you want to see the results of course if you want something non-invasive then there's the lasers there's um othera things like that which i'm sure you've heard of but if you haven't been used to skincare and you want to start to adapt and go slowly then Mm -hmm. i would definitely incorporate products that have collagen in them and hyaluronic acid because you want to make sure that your skin is getting plump again so with products though you have to make sure that you're very adamant 
and using it every single night. Because some people after me for five <laughs> nights, you know, they're like, I'm doing such a good job to stay fall off the track. And then you won't see results, which is sayang. Ah. So it's really, really um, time consuming sometimes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's really investing in yourself. And some products, of course, are a little bit more pricey. Okay. But those are, it's more of an invested investment for you. Okay, so... Mm-hmm. Which which product in the market that's available right now that's the best that has collagen, especially for a guy like me? Mm-hmm. Well, currently I use Zio. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Zio. Health, yeah. Okay. Such a good Zio. product. There's a lot of medical science behind it. Okay. And even though you know the products are quite small, but that's mm-hmm. because they're very potent. So oh. even like one drop of it every night, you will see results gradually. And okay. for skin tightening things like that, I would definitely recommend using a little bit of retinol. Retinol. Is, yeah. So it's vitamin A. It's just a very mm. strong form of vitamin A. But basically, what it does is it'll help um, build up the tissue in your skin so that it's mm. a little bit more plump. Oh wow! You know what? I listed all the things that yeah. you said. <laughs> No, I swear it's so good. Like with retinol, though, if you've mm. never ever used it before, okay. just be mindful that it could cause a little bit of irritation at first because mm. your skin is not to it. So with any strong medical product, yeah. you're gonna notice a shift in your skin. So it's gonna okay. be a little bit red. It's gonna feel like you have a little bit of a sunburn because what right. it's doing is it's removing the layers of damage in your skin so that mm. the new skin can form. So that's when mm. the new collagen forms. So you have to be a little bit patient for about a week. Okay. Um, I don't suggest going out in the sun too much when you're on retinol. Oh. Um, only at night. Yes, okay. and then once your skin adapts to it, because you would have to use it once every other day and then lead up to every day eventually. Mm-hmm. Your skin will feel so nice. I swear, like your skin will feel like glass and as if okay. back if you're very good with keeping up with it. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited. So after this interview, I'm going to go to the nearest drugstore. Yeah. Or the ne- <laughs> and find something that says retinol. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So so before we go to question number two, so like, <laughs> I, I'm keeping, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I actually have an astringent, no, not astringent, like a, like the one with, um, I forgot the brand, um, like, you know, to wash your face, like, uh, I forgot face the wash? name. No, 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 not Benefil? face wash. It's a moisturizer. Bef- what, what do you put before the moisturizer? A toner. A toner, yeah. yeah. I okay. have that. It's, um, I forgot the brand. So do I still need to keep that before I... I, yes. When, when I have this, okay. Yeah, so cleansing is a very beneficial part of skincare because you mm-hmm. want to make sure that you're applying on clean skin. Otherwise, mm-hmm. if you apply something as medical or as strong as this, it won't really break through the okay. pores because so you have so many layers or dirt or oil throughout the day that's covering okay. it. So instead, it's if, instead of making your skin look nicer, it's going to make it look worse because you're blocking uh... a lot of oxygen. And then you're just layering a lot. So you have to make sure you're removing all the dirt. So that's why you cleanse your face, you do your toner, and then um, depending on how thick the moisturizer is, usually at night I just stick to retinol and I don't even moisturize okay. because I want it to go straight into my skin. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> Justin, we're gonna talk more about this. So it's yes, nice. oh my god. Yeah, Feels so it, I know. So it's nice to like, you know, showcase the side of you on this interview because you don't really get to be asked. This mm-hmm. question. And you know, you just glowed earlier when you, you know, talk about things that you're you're really good at. So yeah, trust I Justine for, for skincare. <laughs> you know what? It's such an advantage, Justine, because like when you go to the to your pageant and stuff, at least you would know how to deal with breakouts, with yes. a changing mm-hmm. weather and climate. So next question. What made you decide to pursue pageantry? I never grew up wanting to be in a pageant or okay. dreaming of becoming a beauty queen. Mm. But because when I watched certain pageants like Miss Universe 2005, which yeah. is the first pageant that I watched, oh. and then Binibining Filipinas, um, The Golden Year, yeah. I really saw how these girls carry themselves and empower right. themselves. And at that age, I was about 18 when I watched it. So I wanted a different path for myself to see what I can do and what I could be capable of. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of my way to break out of the shell, you know. It wasn't the normal route of finishing high school and then going to college, pursuing a career. Because in all honesty, I didn't know what I wanted to pursue Mm -hmm. after high school. And I didn't want to waste money on trying to go to college and just figuring it out, you know. Because at that time, I was very mindful of my parents working so hard for our education. And I wanted to be sure that what I put my mind into, I'll I'll do really good. 
Yeah. So, but when I watched pageant, I thought that there's a different way of success. Right. You know, that I was able to self-discover, like discover myself, figure out my strengths, my weaknesses, showcase my story for those who might want to hear it. And I really wanted a bigger purpose other than myself. So right. service work is something that I really admire okay. from other people, something that I wanted to dabble in as well. Mm -hmm. And that was when I saw pageant as a platform for that. So I wanted to prove to my parents and my family that I could be successful in a different way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like the pattern of this world is actually, you know, you need to be, there's a pattern like after high school, you have to go to college and their definition of the world, the world's definition of success is for you to have like, what a six digit salary and you need mm -hmm. to be in corporate. So yes. the things that we're doing actually, Justine, is not what the world says but you know in mm. the eyes of the lord it's different like yes. success is different like when you get to actualize the things that you're actually good at mm -hmm. the gifts and that he like gave you impact other people with that yeah exactly yeah. and when you spoke about skincare and you're so you know, you're such an expert on it you know it, it that's success already because like not everyone could like be an expert with something you know the, mm. um, we're actually better off than everybody else like uh, I'm not saying that being in corporate is bad, but what I'm trying to say is that most of most of the people who are not like us will just wake up, you know, every morning, go to work and finish the day. So at least you're living out your passion, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And I think I'm very lucky that I was able to find a passion and turn it into a career. Right. Because you don't yeah. wake up dreading it, you know? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm really curious, like how did you end up being in um, a, a, an esthetician, a medical esthetician? Yeah, yes. esthetician. Yeah. How did how did you end up being that way? So and then now you're in communications. Yeah. Yes, because my parents, growing up, you know, my parents had their own pharmacy, mm. and then they also on the side had a dermatology clinic in Alangapo City. So that's okay. where I was. I grew up pretty much, um, and then I kind of saw them on how they were treating other people, what skincare was. At six years old, of course, I'm not gonna know the medical terms, but I just mm -hmm. saw how happy it made the people, the clients. And I guess growing up, because I started modeling and I was the girly girl of the family, okay. I wanted to try new things, new products. And then I saw my mom always applying skincare. You know, I was very mm -hmm. fascinated by what she was doing to her face. Cause of course, being um, a pharmacist, dermatologist, she was very careful with her skin. So I would right. always ask her like, what is this, what is that? And then and from there, my interest grew when I started getting acne. Because, you know, in high school, mm. I get hormonal and I couldn't control it. So it was a very big insecurity of mine, especially having started as a model. Okay. So I was very insecure or shy to show my face without makeup. And of course, it wasn't healthy covering it up. So I Googled everything like, how do I treat acne? What do I eat? What do I apply? Home remedies, because at that time I couldn't <laughs> afford products, you know, like in high school. So I'm trying everything under the sun possible. So I guess from there, I was just so fascinated by products, the science, organic, everything holistic approach to skincare, that mm -hmm. it pretty much became a hobby. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out that there was courses for it and you can actually um, graduate and get a diploma, that's when I took it, when I came back from Binibining Filipinas 2015, because I was mm -hmm. I knew that's what I wanted to pursue. Right, yeah, and it mm -hmm. shows you, you're, you're actually a good representation of, you know, skincare. Because you're not just glowing in the in your skin physically, but you're glowing from it within. Oh, so thank you. yeah. So okay, number three. That's just you know, um, I'm I'm really loving this conversation already. What a great thing. be all about skincare. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so okay, number three. What are your aspirations in life? I know there's so many, but what 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 makes you like wake up every day, um, being My inspired? My aspirations. And, yeah. You know, I have a lot of dreams and goals that I want to achieve and they always change or they always add up yearly. But okay. I guess to be a little bit more general, it's just to be an asset in every sense of its word. Okay. So I want to be an asset to my family, an asset to my career, mm. um, to myself and knowing how it can impact other people. And that goes with pursuing my passion. So okay. of course, I want to venture in skincare, beauty and how mm. I can make people happy through that the way my yeah. parents did you know, having a business around it. Of course, eventually down the road, maybe like 10 years from now, yeah. having a family of my own mm -hmm. and really doing something that's bigger than myself, whether it be mission work, service work, something mm. that I can put myself out of and use my talents for. 
You okay, know, so I you, feel, like I feel good when I make people happy. Oh well, yeah, that's the heart of God. He likes to make people happy. So yeah. you mentioned about mission work. Now I'm a born again Christian, and I mm-hmm. do missions. Like you know, pageantry is a mission field. Like I get yes. to minister to a lot of people, mm-hmm. especially to the to the community, um, and also you know do missions in Tondo and a lot of places. So you mentioned about mission work. So how do you envision your mission field to be like? Well, in Vancouver, actually, um, I was involved in the GK Walk. I'm not mm. sure if you're familiar with it, but basically, because my parents were in CFC. Oh yeah, so, okay, Gawad yeah. Kalinga, yeah. Yes, Gawad Kalinga. So okay. I was always, my parents always um, pushed me to volunteer or donate any way I can, you know, to build the houses for the people here in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, no amount is small, and yeah. any work will go forth. So that's when I decided, you know, that's when I kind of had an idea of what mission work was like. I wasn't really mm-hmm. too hands on with it, but I saw what the people behind it were doing and how it impacted the people here in the Philippines and the little changes. That it made yeah. so things like that and you know like you said pageantry is definitely a platform for service yeah. so with pageants i was able to build um charity events um like operation smile for miss universe canada which was a very mm-hmm. challenging but most memorable moment i think for the whole pageant for me um and then doing other service work in vancouver we would go around homeless shelters especially during the really really cold winters just to hand out mm, blanket food yeah. um and just talking to them you know making sure that people are there for them so things like that like i try to volunteer where i can and mm-hmm. what i can as well yeah that's so amazing justine because like you already received the revelation of what god god's love looks like and mm-hmm. God's love is really just the essence of His gospel. It's not just about, you know, of course, it's going to heaven, salvation through Jesus Christ, and but more so, it's like manifesting Christ likeness to the people around you and what you're doing with your mission work and what would be your mission work in the future is that. So I'm really excited for you, Justine, and hit me up if you need help, if you if you need my help as a volunteer, yes, thank you. Thank and you, you can. So Yeah, and you can also join me in my missions in Pandora if you if you're if you're interested. Of so yeah, I would love that. Yeah, so number four, we're still in question number four. We've talked a lot about things already. So, <laughs> um, okay, what specific accomplishment in your life are you most proud of, and why? Specific accomplishments. Yeah. You know, every time someone asks me that, it's always having finished school because mm. i know how hard my parents worked just to give me and my siblings an education mm. and you know like given the fact that they were so comfortable here in the philippines right um they decided to make a lot of sacrifices start from the ground up work two to three jobs at one time just to put food on our table and provide for um, our school so yeah. when i finished college and i was able to start providing and giving back to them that's when i feel most accomplished because now i'm not only pursuing my passion because of them i am surrounded by more opportunities where i can travel more meet new people um because of them as well and now i'm also financially stable when i had a career um, as a licensed medical esthetician and i was able to give them a better life because of it oh wow that's honoring mm-hmm. your parents it's so amazing justine yes. so Yeah, not everyone recognizes the Filipino dream of make, you know seeing your kids graduate. You know, mm. there's nothing that makes them more happy than seeing that. They yeah. would go through ends of the earth just for you to accomplish that. So I think every time I look back at it, that is where that is my why. You know, like why I'm here, why I'm doing what I am, because my parents gave up a lot of their life just so that I could live my dream. Yeah, and I feel like that will be our case in the ne- in the next few years when we become parents ourselves, because like. <laughs> Yeah, because like even me, I've already been thinking about it. Like, where am I gonna send my kids to school in, in, eventually? Mm-hmm. And of course, I don't want to send them to just any school. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been like asking my pastors, like, what if I'll send him to a secular school, or mm-hmm. should it be a born again Christian school? Should it be an international school? So yeah. that has been There's in my thoughts already. A lot of decisions already. around it. Yeah. Yeah, because like you know, I have to make it sure that my children will not be exposed to any kind of. Evil and of course, I mean, there's a lot of evil in this world. But um, what I'm trying to say is that you know I really have to disciple my kids and yeah, you know I have to really instill to them the values. Them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So okay, number five. What do you want the world to know about you um, that the world doesn't know about yet? I don't well, know if that makes know, sense. 
<laughs> of course. I mean, a lot of people, the first time they meet me, they always think I'm shy and very mm-hmm. reserved yeah. because that's just how I compose myself. But a lot of people don't know that is I'm very spontaneous and I love trying new things, even though it scares me. Like yeah. when we go on vacations, my family, um, they, they love excursions. Yeah. So whenever I feel like I'm left out, I can't swim. So every oh. time I need to do things like swimming excursions, let alone in the Philippines, you know, yeah. there's a lot of <laughs> scuba diving. I am going to go for it with the possibility of maybe drowning. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to do it, you know, because I live by that saying, you never know unless you try. Yeah. And I know in the mind that there's people who's going to help me. So I want to live my life to the fullest. So as much as possible, I just like to be spontaneous, to be adventurous. And like when I go past my fear, it makes me feel good that I'm not hindering myself. Because down the road, when let's say I'm older, I might not be able to experience these things. Okay, yeah. But while I still can, I'm going to do as much as I can while I am this young. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to swim, uh, there's something that you should be good about. Like, okay, so like me, I love to swim, but I hate mountain climbing or going yeah. trekking. Mm-hmm. But I love to try that. So, what about you? Do you like to trek the mountains? Go to the mountains? Or oh yes, like in Vancouver. If anyone wants to go to Vancouver, I always tell them that the best thing to do there is hike because you're just surrounded mm. by nature. There's okay. so many beautiful hiking trails. And I am not a hiking person, but because I grew up there, you know, my sister was actually the one who loves to hike. Like, I always want to make sure that I'm assimilating with the culture and experience yeah. Vancouver for what it is. Okay. So I've learned to hike and just the outdoors as well makes me feel so calm. So, yeah. of course, when my friends want to go hike, I'm not going to say no and be KJ. I will right. go with them as well. And then I'm not saying I'm going to go on an eight hour hike, uh-huh. but I will push myself <laughs> to try the hard ones because I want to prove it to myself that I can. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I want to try hiking because like, I'm not really a nature guy, but I want to be surrounded by nature. Like, yes, in a you cabin. Vancouver. Yeah. So and so beautiful. I know. And then let's bring Sasha because he me- yeah. she mentioned to me that they have a cabin. So yes, dur- oh yeah, God. during the lockdown in Toronto, she was saying like, you know, Jean, I'm in the cabin and stuff like yeah, that. And, and I think and- she like also ride horses. Yeah. She likes, she has a horse actually. And then yes, for yeah. her, Sasha. yes, and her horse just came out of the mm-hmm. animal hospital. So she's been like stressed for like, you know, as of recording, um, she's been like stressed a week before before this one because her horse was in the hospital so yeah okay so number six uh, what is your hidden talent hidden talents oh my gosh um i don't think it's very hidden you know because i am a very musical person so i love to sing and dance dancing Uh i'm not super good at but i love it because it's a form of workout okay and when i was younger my brother is a very good dancer actually and he wanted me to follow his footsteps okay so i tried really hard being someone who wants to try new things to impress him and like i was like i want to i want to make sure that i do as well as you so i was in a hip-hop um hip-hop dance squad break dancing if you could believe that oh, so wow. every time <laughs> I, see, I show people one of my old videos they're like that can't be you you look so different you're in like yeah. baggy clothes you're on the floor doing crump yeah like, yep, that was me that was my life <laughs> i was a beauty queen yeah and then here you are you're all glammed up you're all dolled up and then you know people can really just believe that you can do such a thing so exactly so that's why I, when i look back at it i was like you know what i'm glad i tried yeah what are the things that you cannot do justine it seems like you can do it all i can oh there's a lot of things i still need to learn um i can't cook <laughs> I oh yeah you know what I, I thought of that like can you cook <laughs> I think a lot of people knows that. You know, I try. Yeah. Um, maybe very basic, like cooking egg, rice, something that I would eat. Mm-hmm. But if I was going to serve it to anyone to impress them, I probably yeah. wouldn't volunteer. Yeah, same um, here. I love to eat, but cooking is definitely not my forte. <laughs> yeah, me too. I couldn't cook. Um, I have a I have a maid to cook for me mm-hmm. and take care of me. Such yeah. an old guy to have a maid, but Aww, yeah, okay. I need one. <laughs> At least, you know. At least you've, you've accepted it. Yeah, and I, I, and I don't think I'm going to let her go until I get married. So that's like, <laughs> we kind of have an agreement already. So even if I get married, like, she needs to be there to take yeah, care yeah, of the yeah. kids and to, be, to take care of me. So yeah, you should ask her to teach you. <laughs> no, I don't have the time. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so number seven, so who inspires you the most? I'm sure there's a lot, but who inspires you the most? Like, 
Swear, there's so many people you know that you know because yeah. i am who i am because of the people that i surround myself with right i take right. the traits of family and friends and see how it would work with me and it right. kind of absorbs with me too mm -hmm. but if there was definitely one person it would be my mom yeah. you know as cliche as it sounds she really is the epitome of someone who believed in herself her dreams and being so selfless for us, right. like the family, she did whatever she can so that we could have a good life. And mm -hmm. she sucked up her pride and her ego um, just to do that. So, and you know, she may seem a little bit tough because, you know, Mama Bisaya, yeah, they yeah. kind of are <laughs> tough, but she has the sweetest and softest heart. Like she will go out of your way, out of her way to make sure that you're okay. Um, even here, you know, I'm in the Philippines. She's in Canada right now. She makes sure that she's always calling me, messaging me if I need anything. And if I want to go home, just let her know. Like she yeah. worries so much, but it's because she cares. Yeah, and I think that's because like, like my parents are also Bisaya, you know? So, <laughs> uh, hi mom and dad. So I think that's really like the, well, a Filipino parent would be mm -hmm. like, but I think the Bisaya, no, it's something special. Parang, like they're like my, my mom and dad, they call me every now and then, and I'm yeah. this old, yeah. And then we're all boys in the family, and they're treating us like girls, yeah. So they call <laughs> us every now and then, checking on us, how we're yeah. how we are, and I feel like that's natural for for parents, especially parents, Bisaya, because yeah. like we're very, very close and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when you grow up in the province, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we're basically, yeah, we're basically just together. And yeah. uh, Dubai yeah. is such a she's small town. She's very family town. oriented. Yeah. Um, she's very nurturing. But she's also, she ha knows how to do tough love, you know, yeah. like she, she pushes you to the limits because she knows that I can do more. So there's yeah. times where I look for her advice and she'll give me that advice where she, it'll be more empowering than yeah. kind of soft. Yeah. Because she knows that if she babies me too much, I might not step forward. Right, so that's yeah. why I know, you know, like that's why I work so hard, just because I see how hard she worked as well growing up. Yeah. And, you know, she's just showed a lot of examples to me and my siblings on how to become a good person and how to achieve what you want. Yeah, and it's very un it's not so common for parents, you know, Bisaya parents to be mm -hmm. as exploring or as uh risk taking or risk takers because yeah. like yeah, most of the Bisaya parents that I know are actually just very comfortable in their own provinces. Maybe, yeah, yeah. do business, but really trying to go to Canada and yeah. start a new life. And then you're not, you didn't grow up like, you know, having to have problems with money. And you mentioned that your parents were actually kind of well off. And then they, they decided to move to Canada. Because like most of the parents that I know or families that I know that came from Iligan or Mindanao or I grew up in Iligan. So or in Visayas, like, they actually have a good reason why they need to migrate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, so I, and I really want to honor your parents that they really gave up everything. You know, yeah, because life. like, yeah. we had a good life and then we went to Vancouver. So our first house, I remember, it was like a basement. And there was Ooh. five of us, you know? So like, the shift, like, I didn't know how they did it, you know? Like, I, yeah. at first, I was, I didn't understand why we had to live with my aunt at first too, because mm -hmm. they needed to find a house, a job, yeah. and they, I guess they didn't want to explain to us. Yeah. So for the first couple of years, it was like that until, you know, we got back on our feet and then we ended up having a more comfortable life down the road. Yeah. But that's why we're like, you know, my mom always teaches us to be humble, no matter how successful you are, to know where you came from and um, what you've gone through. You have to like put yourself in other people's shoes all the time. Yeah. So for everyone's sake, though, Justine, can you describe to us how is it like living in a basement? Because like, you know, we all know what a basement looks like. Mm -hmm. but in Canada, it might be different, but can you describe to us like what is like, you know, there's seven of you in a basement. How was yeah. it like? Yeah. It was, you know, because I was so young, it didn't really bother me because I guess mm -hmm. I didn't really have a recollection. I was more excited to be in a new country, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought it was a vacation. And I love being with my family. So the fact that we were all together just made it that much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely not a lot of room to run around, to have your own space like we did before. Yeah. And like, when you see people, you would always just see their feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like at the bottom, you know what I mean? Like when people are coming by, you would see the feet. And then, yeah, so like, I guess because of those experiences of living in such a close compact house mm. we became a lot more closer like my siblings and I up to this day are best friends you know mm -hmm. we always catch up with each other 
when we can, you know, um, we travel together and it's so unheard of in Canada because like yeah. people kind of live their own lives and when you're 18, you move out type of thing. Yeah. Um, but like, me and my siblings, we stick so close to each other. We have our own lives, but we dedicate a day just to spend time with each other. We have our own group chat. We always support one another, you know, it's we're very, very close. Yeah, that's a good thing about, yeah, that's a good thing about, you know, when you're raised to be so close to your family and your mm-hmm. siblings. Because, like, same with my family. Um, we were not too close when we were young. Because, like, we fight a lot. Especially that yeah. there's a huge age gap between me and my brother, my eldest brother. But mm-hmm. now that we're old and we really have their own families, we got really, really close. And we have our own group chat, too. So, mm-hmm. I guess it's the best thing about being raised in a Filipino family exactly, so exactly. yeah okay number eight we're halfway there what positive change would you like to see in the world today oh gosh there's so many things happening in the world today you know yeah. um aside from this pandemic there's still mm-hmm. discrimination happening all over the world so yeah. what i'd like to see is a bit more compassion in everyone's mm-hmm. actions and continue hopefully to see more women in power to shape right generations to come because yeah. i do believe that we have a lot to offer and we've proved that time and time again but i guess like because of this pandemic i just hope that we continue to look out for each other and put aside mm-hmm. our differences and we continue to practice that yeah and then were you did you experience any discrimination as a filipino in vancouver vancouver is quite ethnic when you mm-hmm. go there, it's not, you know, um, a divide. There's a different, you know, there's a lot of Southeast Asians as well, Caucasian, mm-hmm. um, African American. So it's a, a melting pot. But okay. I guess um, in certain places, I guess we would feel it because, you know, there was that stereotype around Filipinos being maids or yeah. janitors mm-hmm. or nannies, things like that. And of course, I felt a little bit attacked because I wanted to prove to people that, yes, that is the job that we mostly take, but there's mm-hmm. nothing to be ashamed of. And yeah. we all have a lot of very skilled professionals you know we right. have to find those people that are very successful filipinos all over the world and it's just sad that they um limit it to that one thing because they heard it on the news and they're not mm. quite open-minded so i guess being abroad it helped strengthen my identity more as a filipino mm. woman i kept fighting for it yeah. and i wanted to prove to people that yes i am a filipina but i can do more yeah. and there's a lot of filipinos that can do as well Oh, that's good. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Justine. So, yeah, number nine. What makes you a strong person? What makes me a strong person? There's so many things that I've gone through growing up, you know. Um, I guess I learned to be very independent at a young age because when you're in Vancouver, actually, you can start working at 16. Mm. And so I had my very first job at a retail store, actually Forever okay. 21, um, at 16. And I was so excited because at this point I could make my own money yeah. and I didn't have to ask my parents, you know, and I, I don't have to be that kid that keeps um, having a curfew outside or like yeah. excuses because I didn't want to ask my parents for money at that time. Mm-hmm. So I definitely worked job to job, but at the same time, I went to school, tried to finance my way as well. So I could help a little bit with um, the finance at home. Mm -hmm. And that made me stronger because it helped me meet a lot of people and it helped me stand up for myself. You know, Um, it gave me a voice. I was able to have a wider perspective on different cultures, on what my capabilities are and how far can I push myself. So Mm -hmm. it's definitely those milestones that made me a stronger person. And of course, having a good, um, family background as well. My mom mm. pushed me to become more independent, more empowered, not to let people get to me. Yeah. So, what was yeah. your work in Forever Twenty One? I was literally just a um, salesperson. So I would oh, wow. go around. Yeah. So people would ask, and at that time it was cool because yeah, <laughs> you know, everybody wanted to work in the food industry because that was usually if you don't have experience, that yeah. was the job you were gonna get because you're not gonna have a resume. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you before you got into retail, you'd have to have like two or three job experiences for them to consider you. Yeah. But because I went there, I was like, you know what? It doesn't hurt to try, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I look taller than my age, you know? Mm-hmm. I was a very tall kid and I look older. So yeah. I guess um, the manager saw something in me and I was so happy. I was like, mom, I got a job. <laughs> All my friends are definitely jealous. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then you were earning money and then you can buy your own food, the food yeah, that you like to eat, yeah, the clothes so that you want to wear. It was very liberating. So that was my very first experience of independence. Mm, okay. So yeah, thank you so much, <laughs> Justine, for sharing. 
Because like not everyone gets to have that kind of experience, you see. Because like yeah, yeah. In, in, in my case, um, my parents didn't really want me to work during college because mm-hmm. like you know that pride of being a dad. Like my dad says, like you know, I didn't send you to school to work. So what I yes. did was I started my own fashion business at the age of like same with you, seventeen. So mm-hmm. I had my yeah, I was already an entrepreneur at the age of seventeen, and I was so right. happy earning yeah. my first like you know first five digit you know income. And yes. then I, I I know how what it feels like when you could buy your own stuff, your own mm-hmm. food. You could go out like you know without having to yeah. ask for money. For you yourself, your friends, yeah. Yeah, but that's but you know that's in in every financial breakthrough, there's a lot of sacrifice involved. Mm-hmm. Like there's no such thing as a quick uh, rich scheme. There's no exactly, such thing. Yeah. You have to work for it. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, if that made you strong, what are your weaknesses? So don't tell me it's chocolates, because like my weakness is like chocolate. <laughs> Aside from chocolate, you know, um, I'm a very people person. You know, I mm-hmm. I think I like to see the good in people. And oh my gosh, Justine, I'm also the same. And you know what? I get into trouble for that. Yeah, and I, you know, every time like let's say my brother or like somebody, not my brother, you might get mad at me for saying this but you know if somebody like doesn't like someone and I'm always okay. just like looking at both ends I'm like maybe you know I'm trying to defend both people and they're like why can't you just see that they've done this and it's a wrong thing I always try yeah. to find a silver lining in someone yeah. and to justify it just because like I don't know their story either and I'm not the yeah. one to judge yeah. but I'm also very soft-spoken in terms of letting a lot of things absorb Yeah. Um, because of course, a lot of people turn to me as well mm-hmm. um, to talk to because I like to listen to my friends and family. Yeah. And, and that's something that I had to work with along the way. I don't see really see it as a weakness, but it's something okay. that I definitely have to um, adjust when it comes to boundaries. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we have the same problem because, like, you know, I always see potential in people, mm-hmm. and uh, even if they hurt me or they disappoint me, I don't really um, care or mind. Mm-hmm. Um, not unless if they will put me into a compromising situation, but yeah. you know, as a Christian, I learned that I'd rather be the one getting hurt because mm-hmm. I love the person <laughs> and I see potential in the person and I provided solutions for the person, yeah. rather than be the one who did not expect good something good that will come out of the person. So I'd rather mm-hmm. be that. So Justine, thank you so much for sharing that because you know. That is a very good kind of weakness because that's the heart of God, really. Like, mm-hmm. there's something good in every person, uh, even though his reputation would, you know, uh, supersede him or something mm-hmm. like that. But yes. there's really something good about the person. Um, boundaries, healthy boundaries, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, that's necessary. But exactly. <laughs> we should not expect the worst from everyone. You see, we have to love these people. So, okay, yeah. I know you love to eat. You mentioned that. Um, What is your favorite food and why? And don't give me ideas because, like, you already gave me ideas in skincare. Maybe favorite after you. Oh my gosh! You know I'm the worst when it comes to food. And being in a pageant, you have to be so disciplined. And mm-hmm. a lot of the food that I like, I can't eat. Right. Okay. So I love to eat comfort food. So things like pizza. Oh burgers, my gosh! So good. <laughs> And for Filipino food, kare kare is definitely my number one. Okay, um, okay. Every time I'm craving to eat rice, it's always mm-hmm. kare kare and shanghai. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And growing up, because I didn't have, we didn't have Jollibee in Vancouver. Yeah. I love Jollibee. <laughs> and I love Jollibee so too. So shocked because I'm like, why do you want to go to Jollibee? But it's just like it just reminds me of my childhood. Yeah. You know, and it's something that I really was craving for growing up. So. Yeah. I'm very simple when it comes to food. As long as it tastes good and it's gonna yeah. make me feel happy after it, it's usually not the best nutrition-wise, but I feel like you know I feel lighter yeah. after. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I also love pizza and I and um, I have this uh, diet range or so like my own definition of healthy diet. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually sub I actually replaced my pork and my other kind of meat to veggie meat. I'm not sure if you're um, doing that now, so. Um, because I love to eat, yeah, vegan meat. So I love to eat meat, and I said I cannot do like full-on vegan um, mm. without, you know, like skipping meat. So part of my healthy diet is ramen and pizza. Okay. Yeah. That's so then for me, that's healthy because like, yeah. So healthy for me, that is healthy. 
because it's healthy for my soul, not just yeah, for my Yeah, exactly. It's so body. Food. That's I it. know. <laughs> okay, so we're almost there. So what makes you happy and why? What makes me happy? A lot of things makes me happy, you know. Um, usually I set my intentions just in the beginning of the day. So yeah. in the morning, I know that what will make me happy is being able to wake up, have my coffee, listening to calm music. Yeah. And instead of just going to Instagram right away, I try to really take the time to set the day. Yeah. And sometimes I read, I'll journal, and just to be grateful for everything that I have. But usually I'm happiest when I'm around the people that I love. So my family, my friends, and just being able to spend time with them. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Because like social media, there's a reason why I don't open my social media right away. I read the Bible, I pray. Mm-hmm. Um, because if I op- the moment I open my social media, it's like a bazillion of messages and mm-hmm. it drags me and it will set the mood, and especially that I'm working. So, yeah, I get you. So, okay, so here, what if there's one thing or circumstances in your life in the past that you want to change, what would this be and why? A certain circumstances. I always say that I don't, I live my life not regretting anything because mm-hmm. I know in one way or another, it has taught me a lesson yeah. and it has made me stronger. But I guess if there is a value in there, it would be learning to let go of things that I can't control. Right. Because you know, it, has very, it definitely has consumed a lot of my time in the past mm-hmm. and I'm it made me overthink situations that shouldn't even be um, overthinked in the first place. So I yeah. guess learning to let go and only focusing on what I can control right now, especially with this pandemic, it's definitely yeah. something that I needed to adapt to, learning mm-hmm. to change and just focusing on priorities as well. Okay, so I think I missed to ask you this. Uh, what positive change would you like to see in the world today? Um, that's the one uh, to see more compassion in everyone's oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I feel like I forgot it, but yeah. So anyway, okay, number 14, Justine, what will make you win a crown at the Bini Bini Filipinas pageant? I guess everyone wants to hear this, so what will make you win? What will make me win? Well, I am very determined, persistent, and disciplined. You know, mm. these are the attributes that I have gained throughout the toughest situations in my life. And mm. I know that no one and nothing can break me down because I've gone through a fair share of adversity as well. And yeah. I was able to cope with it, go through it, learn from it, and grow from it. So I think more than anything, everything that I've gone through has prepared me for this journey. Mm. And whatever happens, of course, I'm hoping for the best, but yeah. I'm also I'm realistic with the situation. So I'm just doing the very best that I can with what I have and um, who can help me as well. But mm. definitely as a person, I know that I'm whole and yeah. I will give it my very best. Oh, wow. You know what? But That's your advantage, Justine, because I feel like you're a very... You know, you're a very secured and confident person. You're secured with yourself. You're, you're not in, you, you don't really, you're not bothered by your environment, your surrounding, you know yourself and you're mm-hmm. at peace with yourself. And that's really good because like, it's hard to beat a person that's very confident with her, mm-hmm. with herself. But it himself. took a lot yeah. of time, you know, it wasn't, yeah. I didn't grow up just being confident. Mm-hmm. It's because like, you know, when people push you down, you want to prove to yourself that that doesn't define you. It's like, you're yeah. better than that. Yeah. And it's those situations where it really shows who you are as a person and what you yeah. can not be. And I thank a lot of the people around me as well who have stayed with me even through yeah. the time times because they've also helped uplifted me and told me that I am worthy um, that I am enough and also um, self affirmations for myself oh that's nice yeah so okay before I'll go to the last question which is you know obviously everybody <laughs> knows this already but yes. before before I'll, I'll ask you this one take me back to 2015 and uh, how was it like competing at Binibini Filipinas 2015 having to compete with such strong contenders like Janice Lubina, Pia mm-hmm. Wurzbach, and then you had Christy McGarry, and then who else was in the batch? Um, Eliza Malina, right? Eliza, I'm Eliza, and Kylie. <laughs> yeah, and Kylie. So, how is it like, Justine? Can you take us back to memory lane briefly? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to ask you about Miss Universe Canada. So, Binibini Filipinas first. How is it like competing with this, you know, illustrious names now in the pageant industry 
I didn't know what to expect going into a pageant because I've yeah. never joined a pageant, let alone the most prestigious pageant in the Philippines. You know, mm. a lot of people had their doubts with me, saying that you know you'll be eaten alive if you don't train with the good camps, with the yeah. right mentors. Mm. And I didn't think that the training was that rigorous until okay. my mom actually um, told me about it and explained to me what pageants were like. So of course, having wanting to win, I wanted to make sure that I did everything I can. To to mm-hmm. get my foot in the door of Bini Bini okay. Bini. So I trained okay. for six months with, at that time I was with ACES. Mm-hmm. So I learned everything I needed to know skills wise. And I also yeah. met a lot of people, which was great. But because I was so young and I was so fresh with the whole scene, mm-hmm. I kind of took every single day as a learning experience. Right. You know, knowing what to expect because of course with pageants you have to sell yourself you have to yeah. be vulnerable you have to be authentic um and i i felt at the time that i wasn't as confident as i am now because mm-hmm. i was con- constantly comparing myself to the girls who had experiences like pia words back who's joined three times mm-hmm. and you know janice Salubina, when she comes out of the the door or the runway she just has this aura you know yeah and for- having no experience i kind of just used what i have and what they trained me in that amount of time to build mm-hmm. up that confidence so maturity also i needed to work on but definitely a great experience and such an honor to be competing alongside the miss universe you know yeah. back the miss international the following year um and such very very strong contenders and i also met my best friends there eliza and Anne. so even <laughs> They were like, you know, the three amigas. And even after the pageant going home, we would meet each other like in LA when they were modeling there. So mm. we got really, really close and um, a lot of sisterhood was built. Yeah. And then you, you ended up in the top, um, uh, Justine, I lost you. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So you ended up in the top 25, right? Or mm-hmm. 15? 25. Top 15. Top 15. Okay. So. <laughs> That I have to, uh, you know, I have to check that on YouTube. So, okay, Justine, thank you for sharing that. How about Miss Universe Canada? How different is the system in Canada than the one here in the Philippines? Because I heard a lot from our good friend, Mm -hmm. Tasha, and then, but then I wanted to hear from you also. Well, having compared that with Bini Bini Filipinas, there's nothing like a Philippine pageant. You know, they mm. take this like an Olympic sport. Okay. So when I got to Miss Universe Canada, I definitely felt overprepared, but okay. I didn't want to be complacent either. Because mm. like, you know, once you get complacent, then you get lazy, then you don't want to keep pushing and striving yeah. for better. Yeah. So I I guess the main difference was that you were really competing with other ethnicities. So it felt mm. like an international pageant already. And I felt really proud because I was the only Filipina there um, representing in Miss Universe Canada. Mm. So it wasn't as long as three months like Bini Bini, but they really focused on communicating so a lot of the activities were interviews closed door interviews um, less photo shoots than mm-hmm. bini bini mm-hmm. but they really also um focus on advocacies and okay. that's when i really started learning about how to start a charity how yeah. to create one and you know, raise a fund for operation smile and being a better public speaker because that's what they wanted they wanted a spokesperson yeah, which which uh, which is true, because like uh, if I try to see and look at all the Canadian representatives, I mean, they might not have been successful at Miss Universe, but when you try to get to know them, they're actually good um, mm-hmm. good speakers. Like even the runners up were actually really good. Like hearing from Sasha, the way she answered is actually also very mm-hmm. good. Yes, and yeah, yeah, and same. I agree with the advocacy thing, because like Sasha also did that. Mm-hmm. Um, she was also focused mm-hmm. with feeding the poor, with free education and stuff. So, what exactly year did that. you? Yeah, what year did you compete at Miss Universe Canada? Twenty seventeen. Mm, and then your placement was yeah. top ten. Oh wow, that's that's a good achievement, yeah. Justine. Yeah. yeah, and then you can take over the world. <laughs> top ten, soon. and then I won best in swimsuit, which was really oh, wow. shocking to me. Um, best in swimsuit and best in runway, but you know it's because like I was I was taught very well here in the Philippines, yeah. Yeah. so that's why I was very confident going into the runway skills of it. Mm. Um, and when I got the word, I was very happy. <laughs> yeah, and no wonder because like um, from the girls that I've asked, like from those who have competed with Miss uh, several Miss Philippines, their mm-hmm. first uh, observation would be how a Filipina would present herself, and I think. We get that because of our good training with um, Pasarela and how you should be packaged and 
how you should, you know, do makeup and hair. And they just get so amazed that the Filipino representatives can actually do their own hair and makeup. And we're very, we're very prepared. That's yeah, very is. prepared. Yeah. So, Justine, last yeah. question. And I'm sure I know the answer to this. So, which crown do you hope to get or win at Binibini Filipinas pageant? And please explain to us why. Why that crown? <laughs> So many people, you know, I think know what my goal is in Bini Bini Filipinas. But again, I'm yeah. um, just saying this, any crown for me is already such an honor. Mm -hmm. But because we have to package ourselves in such a way so that we can see ourselves in that competition, mm -hmm. I would have to say Miss Grand International. Okay. Just because I obviously love the production. Um, mm -hmm. You've seen how they dealt with it in the pandemic, yeah. you know, they still yeah. gave us a show entertainment right. and their campaign of Stop the War on Violence really resonates with my own advocacy of trying to help uplift and share the stories of our overseas Filipino workers and migrant mm -hmm. workers and how to get them out of the violence that they deal with abroad and yeah. educate them as well. So it's, mm -hmm. it would be a very good platform for me to be able to work with them. And mm -hmm. I heard it's going to be in Thailand. So that's very exciting. I've never been there. And of course, we've never had the chance to win the golden crown. Mm -hmm. And if I had the opportunity or had that chance to win the golden crown and bring it back home to the Philippines, then it would definitely be such a great present for them, especially at this time. Yeah, and I feel like I just want to encourage you that the Lord impressed to my heart that you can actually win. Um, all you need to do is to be really faithful and continue to do the hard work, the yeah. you know, the work that you're doing now. Mm -hmm. And it'll be such a pleasant, you know, pleasant gift for all of us if you mm -hmm. win. I mean, there's a lot of you competing and I know of a few girls who would want the crown as well, mm -hmm. but it would it would be really great if you can if you would represent us, Justine, because like Communication while uh, wise, you already got it. Experience in a page international pageant, you already got it. And your perspective in life mm -hmm. uh, is different, you know. And I love the reason why you want that crown, uh, which is to help, you know, mm -hmm. to help end the violence with our overseas Filipino workers, which is yes. you know, apparently happening everywhere to the point mm -hmm. of getting killed and getting yes. murdered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Justine, thank you so much. This Thank is the most you. relaxing yeah. interview, I guess, that you've uh, you've done. So I know I I it felt you know like we just started half an hour ago, like we yeah, just got, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. So do you have any messages to your fans, especially right now that I think you're the only bini bini Filipinos candidate who's all over social media. <laughs> Oh, that's so good to hear. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it wouldn't have been possible without the help of my supporters, yeah. Justine Mermaids. They're very, very on top of my social media mm. campaigning. When a photo comes out, you know, they're already reposting within the second. Yeah. So I really appreciate that they really take the time and effort because they could be doing anything else, but instead right. they choose to help me um, mm. campaign. And they're so proud when I do interviews and do well in them. Yeah. Um, so I'm very thankful for them. So thank you, Justine Mermaids, um, pageant styling for connecting us and yes. having the opportunity to talk to you. Yay, thank and you. to everyone else who have followed my journey ever since 2015 up until now. You guys are so loving, patient, because you know it's been pushed back. So please continue to support me and follow me on my social media pages. And I promise to give it my very best so that I can win one of the crowns in Binibini, Filipinas. Yeah, and I feel like that's the reason why the reason why you're getting so much attention because God loves you very much. He wants Thanks. you to feel that He loves you and you're walking in His favors. And I feel like this is very effortless for you. And I'm sure you didn't expect this. And I think that's the mm -hmm. manifestation of God's love, really, Justine. Um, yes. You know, and, and I continue have to have a very good support system, which I'm very yeah. thankful for because it's yeah. really hard to find people you can trust in this industry. Exactly. So I, I, as much as possible, I do keep my circle small because I trust them and I know that yeah. they want nothing but the best for me. So yeah. a lot of my strength comes from my family and my friends, especially, you know, there's times where we doubt ourselves, um, yeah. especially at the peak of the pageant, but they're always there ready to back me up and comfort me. Yeah. And then before we end, um, did you expect any of these blessings? And what were you expect what were your expectations coming into Binibini Filipinas um mm -hmm. during this time? Like, you know, you've been you've been away for like how long? For almost five years, mm -hmm. and then you came back, and then now you're getting all of this massive support, which for me also was very 
very surprising. Yes. I knew it was going to be a challenge coming back into it because I mm. wasn't very active on social media for the five years. So okay. my biggest challenge was how I, how I was going to get the support of the Filipino people again, knowing that I grew up abroad. You know, they okay. want to see a representative who was very Filipino. And I grew up with um, my parents still teaching me the roots and making yeah. sure I don't forget where I come from. Yeah. But the thing is like, I needed to make sure that I was campaigning right, that I was in the hands of the right team. So I did become yeah. independent and I got to choose the people that I wanted to work with, mm -hmm. which at first was a bit challenging. But then now, you know, I have such an amazing team that's helping me. Okay. Um, and with everything that's been blowing up, again, like I told you before, I was considered the dark horse. Mm -hmm. And for this to be circulating and happening so fast, I am so overwhelmed, but mm -hmm. so overjoyed at the same time, because it just shows that like, my hard work is paying off and the people my team everyone who has invested in me you know i can finally tell them that we're in this fight and we're gonna go all the way for sure yeah and always remember justine that god loves you Thank you have a you. friend in me and you can always hit me up if you need prayers and i will pray for you afterwards after this interview off yes, the record thank so you. <laughs> yeah okay thank you so much justine and yeah please make sure to follow justine on social media such an amazing, lovely woman, and for the first time, ako yung nahiya sa isang contestant. Uh, oh and it's such God. a yeah, Thank and it again. yeah, and it's such an honor to be in the presence of such a lovely woman and such a blessing. I praise the Lord for you, Justine for showing up in this interview. I don't deserve this, but thank you so much. I feel it's so blessed. Pleasure. Yeah, I feel so blessed. I feel so blessed. Thank you for taking time, mm -hmm. and you're now uh, all over. Not just in the Philippine social media, but guys, Latin pageant pages. Yeah. I mean, who does that? <laughs> so, I know. I feel like, you know, this is a very, like when it first started happening, I was researching everything so I can, you know, impress them with like food, yeah. language, culture. And it was so yeah. much fun because I'm learning so much along the way, mm -hmm. but I didn't expect it to blow up like this. Yeah. And then how many pageant pages from Latin America have you, have you visited or have done interviews with you? A few now. All of last week, I was just just doing one every day, and then I did oh, wow. two, two days. Yeah, so I was able to talk to them and also like see what their candidates are like, how their training was like. Mm. So it was more of learning from each other, which was mm. really nice. Yeah, and yeah, I I, I don't wanna I don't wanna prophesy yet. Maybe I'll prophesy off the record because so, <laughs> I received something from the Lord. So anyway, yeah. guys, thank you once again, and please continue to support. Sorry. Justine Felizarta at her endeavor at Binibini Filipinas 2020, which will happen really, really, really soon. I hope because for me, I also want to finish the evening gown I'm making for Princess. Yeah. <laughs> there, yes. I know. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm also very excited just to see your evening gown because I know for one, the designer of Justine is yes. a top-notch designer, and we can't wait to see that. So make sure to follow and sub like and subscribe all of our social media accounts and i'll see you next time at season two another episode of pageant talk season two with me g and lasala so thank you very much and bye thank you. bye guys bye. Mwah, 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 mwah.